morning, everyone. I can't believe that it's the beginning of a new year. <laughs> Seems like yesterday was convocation or a commencement. Oh my gosh, it's all blurring together now. So, <laughs> welcome. I'm your acting faculty president, Adam Swanson, and I'm very glad to be here and to open this exciting event. And I was going to have something better to say, but it's not coming to mind, so. <laughs> it's just how I operate. Sorry about that. Come on, brain. Nah. All right. Well, without further ado, then, somebody who has prepared remarks, it's, our ple it's my pleasure to introduce to you George Reyes, our associate student's president. Hi, this is exciting. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's an honor to speak here today and present my remarks on behalf of the Associated Students and the 40,000 students that attend CSUN. As we start this academic year, I'm grateful to have amazing faculty, staff, and administrators who continually help our students succeed. You're sparking our interest in higher education leading a path to success and many accomplishments. You're the spark that drives us to keep on moving forward when we want to give up. The spark that reminds us why we're here. And the spark that helps us helps make season shine. As the AS president, I have the privilege to interact with all the other AS presidents in the CSU system and experience their campuses. I always return feeling fortunate to be surrounded by our campus diversity, leadership, and unity. Associated Students is excited for the groundbreaking of our new Sustainability Center that lies within President Harrison's sustainability priorities and the implementation of a smoke and tobacco free campus. Yeah. <laughs> As students, we appreciate the communication, access, and support that key administrators offer us. You make it easier for associated students to collaborate and keep pushing forward innovative ideas that help serve our students. President Harrison, Dr. Watkins, AS Vice President Sava Galexanian, and I meet on a monthly basis. I must admit, the first meeting was intimidating, and I was nervous at least 90% of the time, and the other 10% I spent at sweating. <laughs> but despite that, I was reassured of the investment that our president and vice presidents have in student success. On behalf of the 40,000 students at California State University Northridge and the associated students, I thank you for the memorable year we're about to experience and all the knowledge you are about to spark within us. Thank you. And now it is my distinct pleasure to introduce to you our president, Dr. Diane Harrison. Thank you, Adam, and thank you, George. I'm so sorry I made you sweat. <laughs> but I do appreciate your remarks, so thank you. Good morning, everyone, and Happy New Year. How about the video? Yes. It was put together by our marketing and communications team in university advancement. And I want to congratulate all of those faculty, staff, and students whose achievements were highlighted. And thank you again for all of your efforts. I also want to thank our student volunteers, our volunteer greeters, student athletes, and the Matador Pep Band for welcoming everyone outside. I want to give a very special warm welcome this morning to those who are new to our campus and those who were recently tenured and promoted. The program lists 86 new faculty, tenure track faculty, and 66 faculty members who were tenured or promoted, and 234 permanent full-time staff who have joined CSUN and its auxiliaries in the past year and those who have taken on new roles. And speaking of our new faculty, 
They have taken a break this morning from their new faculty orientation program with the program's director, Professor Gregory Knotts. And I wish I'm inviting everyone who's in those groups of new employees to please stand and receive our welcome and congratulations. Wow. That's very impressive. So you are joining more than 4,200 faculty and staff employees at CSUN, and they also welcome all of you to our campus. Let me mention some additional special guests here this morning. Seated to my right in the front are faculty who were honored at the May honored faculty reception and staff who received presidential and merit awards at the June Staff Recognition and Awards Ceremony, and their names are also listed in the program. Will you please stand and let us congratulate you one more time. <laughs> and finally, I want to take a moment to welcome our new provost, Dr. E. Lee, who started on July 22nd, and I hope that all of you will give your full support and make a commitment to his success, to contribute to his success in the coming years. Please let's give our new provost, Dr. E. Lee, a warm CSUN welcome. <clears throat> and finally, my special guest, John Wujak, my husband, thank you for coming. <laughs> Our students should be the central focus of why we arrive on campus each and every day, filled with enthusiasm for our teaching, our research and scholarship, and our service. Each and every student expects excellence in CSUN's programs and services, and we should provide nothing less and fulfill that expectation of excellence in our offices, in our classrooms, outside of the classrooms, and on our campus grounds. Our students give us reason to remain focused and strive for the very best. They have chosen CSUN to help them rise and fulfill their expectations and potential. And we have an obligation to help them succeed each and every day. As we begin the 15-16 academic year, I want to take stock of what we accomplished this past year to elevate our students and expand their horizons and opportunities, but also to make plans for where we need to focus in the coming year and beyond. As guideposts to plan and measure our efforts, our seven university priorities provide the framework to highlight our achievements and also our challenges and opportunities this morning. Our seven priorities, in case you haven't remembered each and every one of those, are listed on the inside of your program. Student success, focus on employees for success, visibility and reputation, planning on a future less dependent on state funding, increased research programs and sponsored programs, sustainability, and using athletics as a tool of engagement for our students, our community, and our region. These are all shared priorities, developed out of existing and our ongoing efforts and campus documents that we have committed to for several years now. All of our planning and budgeting and attention needs to address one or more of these areas. All requests for funding, staffing, or anything else clearly needs to point back to these priorities. And with your help, with your support and commitment to these priorities, it is essential to CSUN's success in serving our students and engaging our communities, donors, alumni, elected officials, and the public. Having priorities and a campus-wide shared understanding of them makes all of our jobs easier because we're all working toward the same common good. We can move forward in significant ways if we act in concert. 
I have said in the past that my vision for CSUN is to be a campus that is known nationally, statewide, and regionally for being an outstanding educational institution with highly ranked and high quality academic programs, and for having faculty who give students the opportunity to engage in research, internships, learning communities, and cutting edge technology. And as a campus that reflects the demographics of California and the future demographics of the entire United States. We nurture and prepare this future potential for our state and for our nation. And we must be able to demonstrate student success through our persistence in graduation rates, through reductions in the achievement gaps, our career and, and graduate school placement rates, and other external validations. And that cannot be accomplished without commitment and hard work. Today, as I highlight some of our achievements this past year, and I cannot name or mention every achievement, my remarks are intended to be representative of the outstanding work done across our diverse colleges and departments. We should take pride, all of us, in all of our collective achievements, whether they're mentioned here this morning or not, because they demonstrate the wide range of outstanding work that exists here every day throughout the year across the divisions, across the colleges, and across our departments. So thank you. The university's first priority is appropriately student success. This past spring, 10,658 students were eligible to graduate. And we are getting ready to welcome more than 5,700 first-time freshmen and close to 6,000 transfer students. I look forward to seeing our students at the President's picnic on August 27th and freshman convocation on September 10th, which offer opportunities to further welcome all of our students, new and continuing. And I hope to see you all there as well. I know many of you volunteer for the picnic, and it's, it's a fun, fun opportunity. Now, while we graduated an impressive number of students in December, May, and August, we are estimating our current year total headcount at slightly over 42,000 students. Now, some of you might be thinking, what happened to impaction? I sort of asked that myself, and reducing our student headcount by 1%. Well, remember that our strongest tools for managing enrollment do not really kick in until the 2016-17 year, when we will have both freshman and transfer student impaction and some additional academic program impaction. Part of our increased enrollment is due to the attraction CSUN has become as a destination campus, and we should all be proud of that, and our commitment to access, and of course, not having those impaction tools until next year. But another excellent reason is that even with our growing student population, we are continuing to make good progress with retention. First-time freshmen at a rate of 78% and transfer students at 83%. Our success with programs like Early Start, Summer Bridge, Developmental Math, and other strategies have played key roles in these numbers. Our average unit load continues to be strong, another good indicator of progress to graduation. While we must maintain and increase our retention rates, we also need to ensure that these trends translate into greatly improved graduation numbers and lowering our achievement gap. And we will do a whole lot more than simply cross our fingers and hope for the best. I'm looking forward to working with our new provost, the rest of the cabinet and extended cabinet, and the entire campus community on these important challenges. We're trending in the right direction of meeting our goals for student success and academic excellence. Let me cite a few examples. Our David Nazarian College of Business and Economics received accreditation for five years following stellar efforts by faculty and staff 
a recognition earned by fewer than 5% of business degree granting institutions worldwide. The college was also listed among 35 great schools for financial planners and among the best graduate schools by US News and World Report. In 2014, the Cinema and Television Arts Department in the Mike Kerb College of Arts, Media, and Communication was named one of the top 25 film schools in the country by The Hollywood Reporter. It also named our music department as one of the top 25 music programs in the world. CSUN was only one of six institutions in the United States to have both their film and music program in the top 25. In addition, Variety Magazine recently named CSUN CTVA program as one of the top 40 in the world. And speaking of cinema and television arts, CTVA professor Nate Thomas was recognized as one of the system's highest honors for faculty, the Wong Family Excellence Award, which is given each year to just five faculty and staff throughout the 23 system or campus systems for individuals committed to student achievement and exemplary contributions in their fields. The very successful My CSUN Tablet Initiative under the leadership of Vice President Hillary Baker and Senior Director for Academic Technology Dion Zell continued to grow and expand, increasing the numbers of participating faculty by 30% and bringing cumulative student enrollment to 8,000. As an affirmation of this success, this past January, Apple presented CSUN with an Apple Distinguished Program Award. This award and the other many accomplishments represent recognition in ways CSUN has engaged, educated, and helped students progress. I believe our challenge to continuing our continuation and graduation rates further is to corral all of our many efforts across campus, use data analytics to determine our most effective strategies and continue to scale up so more students are affected. We are planning and getting ready to launch programs and analyses that will meet this need and the expectations that our students have for a high quality 21st century education. Thanks to our partnership with prominent CSUN alumnus, Ravi Sawney, we're exploring a cross-disciplinary master's degree for CSUN in design, design thinking, innovation that will give students the kinds of skills for creativity and innovation that is desired by employers and crucial to an advanced economy like ours. It represents the kind of entrepreneurship and innovation skills I hope we are putting into place in all of our majors so that students can be competitive in the global marketplace. In addition to the design thinking program, the Nazarian College's management department is launching an entrepreneurship minor this fall. In a partnership with the Education Advisory Board, or EAB, we will have the tools, services, and predictive analytics that will help in a variety of areas, including targeted advising, assessing high impact practices, and reducing bottleneck courses. And we now have a user-friendly dashboard that is available to colleges and departments that will provide important data for decision making. We are committed to the CSU's Graduation Two initiative 2025, that expects CSUN to meet a variety of goals, including increasing our six-year graduation rate for first-time freshmen to 60%, increasing the four-year graduation rate for transfer students to 76%, closing the achievement gap for historically underrepresented students, and closing the achievement gap for low-income students to 5% or less. The cohort that we will be judged upon and measured in this latest graduation initiative is 2019. That will be the first year. Those students are just starting their freshman year in high school this year. So we have a few years to get our act together 
before they arrive. And I'm looking forward to it. We've, of course, established near-term goals for the university in the coming year, increasing our continuation rate by 2.5%, increasing our graduation rate by 2%, and closing the achievement gap by 2.5%. In the coming year, we will continue to apply those practices that have been effective, such as Early Start and Summer Bridge, and explore new opportunities using the EAB tool to achieve these goals. In addition to classroom experiences, we will also continue to provide enriching out-of-classroom student experiences. And this past year, we had numerous achievements. A few include at student housing this semester, we will open new food locations that we hope everyone will have a chance to visit. The expanded and relocated Matador Mercado, a new Freudian sip with very late hours, I believe, and especially the new Bamboo Terrace restaurant, CSUN's new Pan-Asian concept that will primarily serve our residential students but also offer weekly discounts to employees. I would urge you to go up there and try it. It's great, and the setting is amazing. This fall, under the curation of CSUN Art Gallery and last year's recipient of the preeminent scholarly publication award at the honored faculty reception, Professor of English Charles Hatfield, there will be an exhibit of the original artwork of comic book artist and creator Jack Kirby creator of many of the characters featured in the recent successful movies at Marvel and Disney Film Studios. This past spring, I had the opportunity to enjoy a spoken word event co-sponsored by Chicana, Chicano Studies, the Provost Office, and Government and Community Affairs, which featured presentations by many of our students and LA Poet Laureate, Luis Rodriguez. And Laureate Rodriguez will be a poet in residence at CSUN in spring of 2016. And to ensure a safe and better informed student community as part of a mandated effort, virtually all of our students, 96%, completed the state and federally mandated required training in sexual violence prevention. These efforts will of course continue this year as we improve our campus climate. And before we move on, I want to touch on the topic of social justice. There is a general unease and unrest that is going on in our country right now, and I am saddened that we have lived through the tragedies related to the discrimination and profiling of African Americans in Charleston, Ferguson, and right here in Los Angeles. Our students are still learning about themselves, about the world, about how they fit into that world, and they expect social justice. We have an obligation to provide a welcoming environment that allows people to share their perspectives and teaches them to listen and hear others as well. I think it is imperative to model social discourse. We must ourselves be courageous and not tolerate those around us that discriminate against others based on their race or their gender or sexual orientation or religious beliefs or physical abilities or anything else. We must confront these issues together and promote inclusion and understanding. I am proud that at CSUN we have worked and continue to work to create a positive environment for such discussions and inclusivity. One of these was the implementation of the CSUN Dreamers Scholarship last fall for our undocumented students, an important segment of our student population who otherwise have virtually no type of tuition support or little funding available to them. I want to thank Vice President William Watkins of Student Affairs and the Financial Aid Office under the direction of Lily Vidal for implementing the program. We were able to fund 60 students in the fall and 111 students this past spring. And I received many letters 
from the recipients of these scholarships, expressing their gratitude and sharing personal stories about the difference it made in their lives. These were incredibly moving messages to me. Providing such support is the right thing to do to support the education of these students who live in and contribute to the success of our communities and our country. The topic of social justice is also related to the second university priority, focus on employees for success. This priority recognizes that we must encourage and support our faculty and staff as well, because your commitment and well-being is important and a key to boosting the success of our students. Today's world relies more than ever on being part of a team, a team of diverse individuals to create, to innovate, to accomplish, in fact, most things. And we are not immune from the issues of the world within our own enclosed campus community. As I said at last year's event, it is important, it is a necessity that our faculty and staff reflect our student diversity. We've made good progress on this. This year, as we hired approximately 86 new tenure track faculty, 50% of them were from underrepresented groups. And that is a great tribute to, our, to the efforts made by our deans and department chairs and the faculty to help develop a more diverse faculty. We must now pay as much attention to the retention of these faculty and to creating an inclusive environment of excellence for everyone. We need to mentor and support our new employees and our new faculty. And I think all of us play a role in this. A search for a new chief diversity officer is underway. This position will report to me and will work with the entire campus community to proactively develop and implement collaborative plans and programs that educate and encourage the campus to adopt diversity, inclusion, educational and employment opportunity, and cross-cultural proficiency as core values for CSUN. The CDO will lead our newly established Commission on Diversity and Inclusion Initiatives. I look forward to announcing this appointment and taking the steps necessary to fulfill our goals to be a diverse and inclusive institution. This is also related to our continued efforts to create a broad culture of respect on campus. To this point, and in support of our efforts at inclusion, please carefully consider your own actions and contributions toward this goal. A positive step for all of us is to talk to each other, not about each other. Many microaggressions occur at this level. Gossiping and complaining among groups unnecessarily creating intrigue and stirring a pot one against another is not the best approach. Let's treat each other well with respect. Create a campus-wide set of expectations that this is the type of campus climate that shines at CSUN and we all share these values. To promote this culture of respect and collegiality, we will include these expectations in places like our job descriptions and appointment letters to affirm that it is the responsibility of all members of the CSUN community to share and uphold these important values. I was extremely glad that we were able, finally, to make some headway in our compensation issues for faculty and staff through our equity increases. 39% of our faculty and 22% of our entire staff received such increases. This is an issue that stays on my mind. My plan is to continue to allocate funds to this effort. I know that we have more work to do and we will do whatever we can over the next several years. Some other examples of our focus on employee success, the Sea Sunshine from Within program, the professional development program for staff that is intended to build connections across divisions and strengthen our community and commitment to the university's mission and priorities. The inaugural cohort completed the program this past spring and we have a new cohort launching in the fall. 
And I want to thank Human Resources under Associate Vice President for Human Resources, Christina De La Vega, and the Program Steering Committee for their leadership. I want to say that for our staff holiday and summer celebrations, we've seen an increase in attendance since they debuted. They're fun. It's an opportunity to see many of our employees with their families having a good time, sharing in casual conversation. You will never see me on the climbing wall. <laughs> never. And I do hope we can add some adult games next year. And finally, as George mentioned, we had an incredible response to our question related to student success in our Help Make CSUN Shine Bright program and about whether CSUN should become a smoke-free campus. And I'm pleased to again remind you, yesterday was our official first day of becoming completely smoke and tobacco-free. Please encourage your colleagues who are still smokers to seek out the many programs on campus that can help them quit, including the Student Health Center. In fact, I'm proud to report that the new policy has already had a positive impact on one of our employees. I recently learned that Daryl Hart, a painter in physical plant management who's been a smoker for about 15 years, decided to quit smoking and acknowledged that the new policy was the tipping point for his decision. Thank you and congratulations, Daryl. Where are you? Oh. <laughs> Now, we need a few more Darrells. Congratulations, and hang in there. But thank you, because the health and the well-being of our employees, of you, Darrell, and everyone else on campus, is really important to the university and to me. So I'm glad you made that healthy choice for yourself. The next priority I want to speak about is the visibility and reputation of the university. It's not just about accolades or being number one, although that's not so bad. It's about attracting the best faculty. It's about having employers see value in a CSUN degree and, of course, attracting much-needed outside support, in dollars, that is. And as I've said many times, CSUN is already strong in so many areas, and we have great stories to tell. We just need to tell them more effectively and show our pride. Over the last year, much has happened to raise our profile. Under the leadership of Vice President of University Advancement, Rob Gonzalez, and Associate VP for Marketing and Communication, Jeff Noblet, we've reorganized and bolstered our communications efforts and invested in reputation and visibility building initiatives. The most visible of these efforts, of course, was the launch of the CSUN Rise campaign this past spring that included a micro website and a highly visible promotion campaign right here in our neighborhood. I hope some of you have seen the eye-catching ads at Burbank Airport or perhaps at the Topanga Mall. I've been to the Burbank Airport three times and I keep forgetting to look. So <laughs> next week, I'm back again. I'm going to see them. I've seen pictures, so they're great. This campaign has been complemented by our social media efforts and the migration of our website to Web1, which remains an ongoing project. As we move forward with the CSUN Rise campaign, we will be using data metrics and evidence like number of clicks, GIFs, media placements, job fair exhibitors, rankings, and attendance at athletic and cultural events to measure the success of the campaign. And our growing reputation has already paid some dividends as when LA Mayor Eric Garcetti chose CSUN in this very venue that we're in, the VPAC, as the site of his State of the City address in April. He and his staff were very complimentary of our Performing Arts Center and outstanding support he received from the university. Similarly, we were so proud to serve as a host town for last month's very exciting 2015 Special Olympics World Games. We housed the, the game's largest delegation prior to the actual start of the games with nearly 500 athletes from seven different countries staying on our campus. 
Given our commitment to inclusivity and helping young people achieve their goals, I enjoyed meeting the athletes and seeing their enthusiasm and spirit. Thanks to Francesca Vega, Director of Governmental and Community Relations, and Heather Carnes, Associate Director of Administrative Services at the University Corporation, for spearheading this memorable event and the support of so many of you. I also want to share the incredible work of the Zane College of Extended Learning under the leadership of Dean Joyce Vaught Javier and her staff. They have generated and returned to the university millions of dollars to support our faculty and our students and have taken the lead in partnering with various community groups and businesses in important innovative projects like the CSU 5 and the CSUN Impact Day focused on design thinking that I discussed earlier. I am thrilled with the growing recognition for the CSUN fully online programs and want to acknowledge their efforts in raising our reputation and visibility. This isn't just about good marketing or branding. It's about being genuine and telling our stories honestly. Our excellence does not need any spin or embellishment. More importantly, we all play a role in elevating the reputation and visibility in what we do every day to contribute to the success of the university and to our students. The next priority is planning on a future less dependent on the state of California. Early in the summer, we were fortunate to learn that the governor and the state legislature approved a budget for CSU that went beyond the governor's original proposal and the May revise, and it fully funded the support budget submitted by the trustees for 2015 and 16. But of course, this does not make up for the years of reduction we have received over the last seven years, and we are not back to our funding level of 2007 and 8. So we must remain focused on the priority to plan for a future less dependent on state funding. Philanthropy, of course, is an important part of this effort. Again, under the leadership of Rob Gonzalez and his advancement staff, the number of donors has gone from just over 6,000 the year before my appointment to over 13,400 and counting. In this same time period, our total gift commitments have risen from 11.8 million to 18 million every year for the last three years. This is an achievement we will continue and grow. Right, Rob? Yes. <laughs> we have some really good forward momentum. The University Corporation, under the leadership of its executive director, Rick Evans, also continues to be an excellent partner in seeking new sources of revenue. In fact, this past year, our contracts with Pepsi and the Follett Higher Education Group, our bookstore operator, were aggressively renegotiated and included approximately two and a half million in bonus payments that we will use for scholarships and for our athletes. We continue to explore opportunities, which includes increasing the numbers of donors and alumni engagement, expanding our self-support, certificate and professional development programs to provide additional funds for the university priorities. The current environment requires that we be innovative and creative and entrepreneurial as an institution, and we welcome that challenge. Always remembering that we have thousands of students who are counting on us to excel. Our next priority is to increase research activity and sponsor programs. Last academic year saw a 4.5% increase in such activity for a total of more than 32.2 million in research awards. Under the leadership of Associate Vice President Chris Kachikian, we look forward to expanding these activities. In fact, last year, sponsored programs activity returned more than 1.7 million back to the campus to reinvest in such events. One of the most exciting and significant projects is the Build Podere grant. The $22 million grant from the National Institutes of Health, which was the biggest in CSUN history. 
The grant's principal investigators are Chris Kachikian, psychology professors Gabriela Chavera, and Carrie Sattermo, and assistant vice president for graduate studies Maggie Schifrar. This grant not only advanced our goal to expand research, it also supports the priority for student success, our commitment to social justice, and to inclusion. It is an innovative undergraduate research training program that aims to increase the research workforce by providing opportunities for traditionally underserved students who might not choose a biomedical research career. Using an innovative shift in training and mentoring and by reframing and redesigning current approaches through the lens of critical race theory. And last fall, CSUN was selected as a site for a STEM education workshop co-sponsored by the White House. It was an opportunity for us to showcase our success and leadership in this area. We're excited by the potential to build on this tradition to help diversify the fields of biomedical research, and the STEM areas. Sustainability is an area that we should take great pride in what we have accomplished in the past year. Last fall, we appointed a sustainability program manager, Austin Erickson, in our facilities department. Austin is working and helping to lead and coordinate the campus's work in this area, working collaboratively across campus with individuals and departments, like Dr. Helen Cox at the Institute for Sustainability, Associated Students, the University Corporation, Mike Antos at the Center for Urban Water Resilience, and others to help make CSUN more green and sustainable. And we've made real measurable progress. Last academic year, we achieved a 7% water reduction, and we're projecting a 17% this year, putting us on, the, on track to reach our goal of 20% by 2020. I hope we will exceed that goal. We're also on track to exceed the reductions required of us as an LA DWP customer and meeting, meeting the governor's statewide mandated goals. So please, please do all you can to cooperate in using our resources wisely, particularly in water. And while you see these accomplishments are the results of great collaboration and partnerships across campus, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I especially want to thank Vice President Colin Donahue, and he's not here this morning. He's helping his daughter move in at San Diego State. I said, that's a good excuse, okay. But he, his commitment and leadership has been hugely important to us in this area. Another success was the implementation of e-travel this past fall, resulted in an 80% reduction in paper processes, and through the leadership of the University Corporation, which manages our food services, we developed a campus real food program that promotes natural and locally sourced food the plan will include the recovery of dining program food waste to convert to compost. We've been recognized for these and other efforts. We achieved regional recognition in the EPA Food Recovery Challenge Program. And this spring, as part of Arbor Day celebration, we were recognized as a tree campus USA by the Arbor Day Foundation. And how about the AS-sponsored farmer's market? I have three words. Go, it's fabulous. <laughs> it's great. When will that start back, George? The second week. Second week. Tuesdays. Yes. All right. We also just learned that CSUN is one of 19 finalists nationally for a Climate Leadership Award managed by Second Nature's American College and University President's Climate Commitment, and they'll announce the winners in November. Uh, the winner, there's one winner. But just being nominated and a finalist, I think we should be very proud of. 
Sustainable practices are not just the right thing to do as we prepare our students for a more sustainable future. It's an opportunity for learning and to make it a regular part of our curriculum. This year, we're developing a new master's degree program in sustainability. Last year, 73 of our students decided to have a minor in sustainability. And of course, students can build their general education course path around sustainability by taking classes from faculty who have incorporated sustainability education into the core curriculum. The importance of preparing our students to live a more sustainable and resilient lifestyle for the sake of the environment and their quality of life truly brings home our responsibility to the students we serve and to our surrounding communities as we are stewards of place. We want to graduate students who are engaged citizens, who will be leaders in their community and promote living and healthy, sustainable and resilient communities. We need to do our part to make sure that the world is clean, healthy, and sustainable. The last but not least priority is athletics as a tool for engagement. And like the other priorities, success in this area serves to advance other goals, like student success and planning for a future less dependent on state funding and raising our reputation and visibility. And it doesn't mean that athletics is more important than other areas, like the performing arts, but it wasn't being leveraged sufficiently, so we needed to focus. And I want to commend athletics for another exciting and successful year. For the second year in a row, our women's basketball team under coach Jason Flowers won the Big West Conference Championship and returned to the NCAA Regionals. Mm -hmm. And both softball under coach Tariah Flowers, wife of Jason, they are having a good year. They did. <laughs> and women's track and field under head coach Avery Anderson were also Big West Conference champions. But it's, yes, thank you. <laughs> but it's not just about winning and competition. It's also about excelling in the classroom. And we have heavily invested in the academic success for our athletes to ensure that they do well and graduate. There is, of course, the Matador Achievement Center we established in 2013 with the support of an NCAA grant to further advance the academic achievement, achievement of our student athletes. The center tutors in more than 30 subject areas each semester. And our summer success program entered its second year with near 100% retention of the first year cohort. And under the heels of the just concluded three year NCAA Accelerating Academic Success Program grant, we just received another $100,000 from the NCAA that will support a partnership between the university and the National Urban Alliance for Effective Education to provide first and second year student athletes with tools and support needed to build confidence, set high expectations, and develop strong intellectual capabilities. We've hired a new Senior Associate Athletics Director for Academics, Tayana Jones, who started this week, in fact, and appointed a new Faculty Athletic Representative, Dr. Ed Jakowitz, who will also chair an independent faculty committee that will look at current patterns of student athlete course and major selections and make recommendations for any programmatic changes. Another indication of academic success is the record number of student athletes, 81, who were inducted into this year's Varsity, Varsity N Academic Athletics Honor Roll, our largest number ever. There is so much other excellent work going on in athletics in support of student success. The students, the coaches and the staff were involved in the community. Nine teams had a perfect 1,000 academic progress rate. Tennis head coach Gary Victor and women's track and field coach Avery Anderson were named Big West Coaches of the Year in their sports. And overall attendance in men's basketball, women's soccer, women's volleyball, and softball all went up. 
I'd like to update you that we are continuing in a long and arduous investigation process in athletics related to our men's basketball team. We continue forward in the 2015-16 basketball season with determination and with optimism, mindful at each step of the way of the best interests of all involved, especially our student athletes. And as with other bumps that we may have encountered together as a campus community, we will deal with it all head on and with great integrity. And this is no exception. My thanks to Dr. Brandon Martin, to Coach Reggie Theus, and Associate Vice President for Undergraduate Studies, Elizabeth Adams, for their leadership in this matter. Continuing our momentum, Athletics has also just relaunched its website and this spring announced the CSUN Sports Network, a multimedia platform that will create and showcase extensive video content for the web and social media, expanding the ways in which fans can interact with their favorite Matador teams. I hope all of you will demonstrate your support and appreciation by attending many of our sporting events in the coming year, invite others to come with you and bring your families. And finally, I want to acknowledge the work, the incredible work of Thor Steingraber and his staff here at VPAC. They have hosted a number of campus and community events. Their upcoming season is phenomenal and they continue to integrate our students and faculty into this venue. Thank you, VPAC. Thank you all. And as my remarks have shown, I think it is a great time at CSUN. It's a great time in the use of, our, of analytics to help our decision making about our students, faculty, and the campus. It's a great time for our diversity efforts. It's a great time for creating a culture of respect among everyone on campus. It's a great time for fundraising. It's a great time with the new provost. And it's a great time for just being here at CSUN and building on the incredible foundation in which we are privileged to have. And now we are continuing to build. Next week, we officially welcome back our students. I've cautioned freshmen at the orientations that I've attended to go to class. <laughs> they laugh. But I repeat it. <laughs> the students who will give us over 42,000 reasons to excel and to shine. Thank you all for your efforts. Welcome back for those of you who went somewhere. And I wish you all a very fantastic academic year. Thank you. Thank you, President Harrison, and if I may, thank you again for your focus on inclusion and justice and student success. All the other priorities are important too, but those are the ones that I like, so I'm taking this opportunity. All right, thank you all for coming. I encourage you to Get one last bit of rest and relaxation talking to your friends and colleagues out in the lobby before we all lose track of what day, time, or year it is starting really, really soon. And while you're out there, please say hi to our brand spanking new provost. <laughs> Thank you for coming.